In this video, I would like to give you some introduction to mastering. We will be working on an ancient recording I did on my high school, which is, well, many years ago. So the quality is bad. But actually, that's the point, because this way I can show you that even from such a bad recording, you can create kind of okay sound within a few minutes. So, I've created a project in Cubase. It contains only three tracks, one for the original song, one track we will be working on, and finally a comparison track. In this case I have chosen some song from Guano Apes, you probably know it, so let's play it a little. And now play our song. You can see that the sound is so much worse, but well, I will try my best. <laughs> First rule, you should always start mastering from the loudest part. Well, now let's play a little more. So let's get into it. First we should check for the stereo field. So let's load our Melda Production stereo processor. Okay, and see what the comparison recording has. You should see the peaking and the nice ellipse. Not too thin and not too thick. And this is what we have. Well, the peaks are much lower and the ellipse is kind of thin. So let's make it wider. First we can try some global widening, but it's probably... Yeah, it doesn't work. Because the base part is already too wide, so we can tighten it a little. On the other hand, the middle frequencies are not so good. So let's make it wider. In most cases it's okay to widen the high frequencies because they do not cause too much trouble like bass. Okay, okay, so let's get to the highest frequencies and apply some exciter. Exciter can improve the clarity of each band, but really be careful with it because it can destroy the sound completely. But in small amounts, well, it could be nice. Finally, you should always check the peak meter. The level should not be too high. So, next part, frequency balancing. First I load our M Spectra Dynamics. Well, it's a nasty big beast, but well, it's worth it. What you can see here is a thin orange line, which corresponds to threshold of processor one. And you can see it on the processing shape below too. So, you can see the resulting spectral content and the original spectral content of the recording. And finally on the top, the gain reduction. It looks small, but it is not. It's 5 dB of destroyed dynamics. If you put this too low, not a good idea. So the threshold should be placed right below the top peaks, so it removes the loudest frequencies. So, disable the effect. You can also play with the smoothness parameter, which defines how natural the sound is. Okay, let's move to the next part, which is equalization. So, let's load M Auto Equalizer Linear Phase and start analysis on our song. When the graph stops moving, the analysis is complete. We should go through different parts of the song, but we don't have time for it now, so let's keep it simple. Now we have to do the analysis of the comparison song. It's done simply by moving the auto equalizer to the track where the comparison song is. And now we can do the same job, except with a different button.
the equalizer will try to make our song sound like the comparison. So I guess this is enough. Okay, and now let's move the effect back to our track and perform the equalization. It's just a single button. And this is the result. Well, now we can control how much the effect supplies. I usually keep it at about 60% because that way it sounds kind of natural. Let's compare. You can see the spectral content is similar, but I don't know, I just don't like it, <laughs> to be honest. So let's try a different approach. We have created several analyses of many songs of various styles, so I'll try one of them. Well, I like this much more, so we will probably stick with it. So the final stage, limiting. Let's load M Dynamics limiter. Okay. Well, on the peak meter you can see there's some room, so we can use threshold to increase loudness of the recording until the peak meter touches the top limit which is which is now it's speaking a lot now but I think this is kind of okay you should not overuse it however You can hear the loveness of both songs is pretty much the same, which means we are finished actually. Just need a few corrections and that's all. You should not increase the loudness more than you need. Every time you increase the loudness, it sounds better, but only for a few seconds. You lose dynamics and that's bad for you. Well, this is it. The rest is up to you, your time, your experience and your plugins, of course.